e ku de jasi ko yi e de ka bo si ori emi na so yoruba eni ola ni oruko mi ni ori eto ni e ti ri ojulowo kiko si so kika ti mimo ide yoruba to mu no doko ti e ba fe ni oye yoruba e ma ba mi kalo Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is Emma. Well, a couple of months ago, I put out a questionnaire and some of you asked if you could have access to the transcripts of my podcast lessons. Well, apparently that's not possible right now. It will eventually. I'm working towards it. I'm planning for that to happen. But for now, in the meantime, we're going to look at the lessons together and I will write them out for you so you can see how the words are written. All right? Okay, so the main topic for today is the basic greetings. So we're going to be doing some greetings today, which is what is in the first episode of the podcast lessons. And talk about greeting. <laughs> Yoruba people do a lot of greeting, a lot of it. Like they can literally greet a dead person back to life. That is how much we love to greet. But the way we greet is kind of different from English in a way. We don't have hi, hello, or hey. That is very rude. <laughs> that is very rude when you use them in Yoruba. So, how are greetings done in Yoruba? First, we need to know the time of the days because the greetings are done according to the time of the day. So, what are the common time of the day that we have in Yoruba? The first word that we'll be looking at is morning. How do we say morning in Yoruba? It is written as aro. Ah, ah, ro, and there you go. Ah, ro. That is how you say ah, ro. Repeat after me so you practice how to say it. Ah, ro, and it has its own mark. Ah, ro, do, me do. Ah, ah, ro. Okay. So the next um time of the day that we'll be looking at is au son. Au son. This is how you write also, do me. The next time of the day that we usually commonly greet greeting time is evening. Irole. 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 That is evening. Irole. While the, the next common one is at night and is written Ale, a, le, ale. So these are the four common greeting times in Yoruba: morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Aro poisson at the ale. I'm going to write everything out so you can see. So we have aro poisson. Irole and Ale. Can you see that? Aro, also, Irole, Ale. With the tone marks on them, there are three major tone marks in Yoruba, and they are Do, Re, and Mi. So these are the three tone marks that are used in Yoruba. Do, re, and mi. So do is more of a deep voice, really low. Do, do. Re is middle tone. Re. And re is not really used when we are writing. It's never used. Because of the way it is, it kind of amounts to, well, it's nothing. All right? So when you see any words that has no tone marks on them, Understand that it is re. So if I write um, this word, omi, can you see? So when you see a word like this, omi, you understand that it is re re. It has no tone mark on that. Re re. So any word that you see in Yoruba with no signs on them, know that it is re, all right, which is the middle one, re. Okay? So. Any word that you see that has this on them, 
Can you see that? That is do. 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 Okay? And this, this one here is me. I'm going to rub off all of this and I'll write arrow without a sign. I'll pronounce it how to you and let me know if you can get the sound of the tone map just by listening to it. Aro. So this is Aro. A ha ro. That is how it sounds. What tone do you think it has? A ha ro. A a sounds low. A do. See that? A do. A a. It sounds high. A me a ha. Oh, just about yeah. So that is for the middle one, though, not for the very first one. So the first one is do. But well done for trying. And then the next one is me. What about the last one? What do you think should be on? O, a, ha, ro, ro. What does ro sound like? Ro. Is it do or me or re, ro, a, ha, ro, ro. It has the same sound as ha because it is do, a, ro. Can you see that now? Uh, arrow. Yes, well done. Well done. Yes, it is do. That is it. So the more you practice, the better you'll become. Okay, so we have arrow. All right. What about awesome? Let's try that and see. Awesome. How does awesome sound to you? Awesome. Awesome. How does that sound? Or Oh, yes. Yeah, so on O oh, we have do, O, oh, O, oh. and then on A ah, what do we have? O, oh, son, son. How does son sound? Does it sound high or does it sound low? O, oh, son. Yes. Well done. It sounds high. O, oh, son. Do me, son, or son. Well done. Give yourself a round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. So we have do me on or son. All right. So I think you have a glimpse of the sounds now. You just need to practice as much as you can. Okay. And in every class we do, I'll make sure that we do practice of tone marks so that you get um, used to using them. Okay. So now we know the different times of the days. Aro. How do we use that with greeting? Now, there is one thing you need to take note of in Yoruba greeting. There is one um, dominating word that we use a lot. And the word is... Who? Can you see that? Who? Who? This word, who, is added to anything, any form of greeting that you want to do at all. Just add ku to it and you're good to go. Okay? Ku. ku does not have a literal translation when it comes to greeting. It's just a form of acknowledgement in a way. Ku or son. There is no literal translation for the word ku in its use as greeting. But ku as well other mean another thing, and which is to die. Ku. So if I said ah, otiku. That means he's dead. So who in that sense means to die. But in greeting, when we use it in greeting, it does not have a literal translation. All right. So when you know the dominating word, which is who, and something that is also important to take note of is this word, e, eh, e, eh, e. Eh. So e eh is an honorific way of showing respect in Yoruba. When you see a Yoruba person, for the first time, you don't know the person. So there is this sign of respect that has to be there when you're communicating with them. The person is obviously not your friend. 
And also, if you are in a formal setting, so maybe you're talking to your boss and you want to speak to them, you need to use the word air. Eh. It doesn't matter if your boss is older than you or is younger than you are. You need to use the word air eh in that setting. So this air eh goes in line together with who and every other form of greeting that you want to do. And then it completes. So how would we say good morning? Remember our rule, air. Eh. Who, which is the dominating word, who are wrong. Can you see that? Now, this is how you will often see it written in a book. But over time, we go ekaro. So this ku here becomes is joined together with aro. And it becomes a caro. It becomes that. A caro. Caro. A caro. So that is how you would say good morning. A caro. A caro. Please do let me know if you have any question. Just send me a question and I'll be able to read it in the chat. Okay? And let me know if you understand my explanation. If there is anything you want me to explain uh, again, I'll do that. Still let me know. Okay, so that is. A caro, all right? Now, osso, how do we say osso? The same, e, ka, ka, mi, asso. And it goes like that. Uh, level two. Okay, so level two is not available yet. We are still on level one of the podcast lessons yeah so level two would start probably uh late november that's when level two will begin okay yeah so we're still in level one for now but it's available on audible it's available on spotify it's available on apple on all of um, the major streaming platforms that's where you can get it yeah but we're working towards it <laughs> gradually no worries you're welcome i'm glad you're enjoying that okay so a person, this is how you write a person, a person, and a prole, this is how you write a prole. So with the irole, the e is all, and you just add that to it. A prole. Equirole, equirole. Okay? All right. And the last one will be ekale, ekale. Ekale. So that is how you would write ekale. Can you see them? Can you see the words? Is it clear enough for you to read? Please do let me know. Okay, so that is a carol. So this is how you would write and say it the greetings to a Yoruba person if you come across one. A caro, a person, a curole, and a carole. Lovely. That's good. Okay, so I want us to do a little quiz with these words. Can anyone tell me the difference between these two sentences? Okay, so the focus here is arrow, but what makes it different? All right, the first one is so the first one is mojoni arrow, mojoni arrow, while the second sentence is. Moje, unje, aro. Look at this sentence. Okay? Moje, unje, aro. And moje, unje, aro. Can you tell me the difference between them? First and foremost, do you understand what the mean? Okay, who can tell me the meaning of the sentence is mujeuni aro, mujeuni aro. We all know that aro means money, 
So what's the difference between them and what do they mean? Oh, well done. Have you eaten this morning? Mm, it's close, but it is not a question. Ah, it's confusing. Okay, okay. All right. I'll help you out. I'll help you out. <laughs> so this one is mojeon ni aro. Let's break it down. Mo, mo is I. Mo, I. Okay. Jeon, to eat. To eat. Okay. To eat. And ni here. It's giving us is a preposition of time in this particular sentence. Okay, so in that is what this stands for. I okay to eat. Yes, I ate breakfast, but that is the second one. This this one is I ate breakfast. Well done, well done. That is really good. Yes. So moje onje aro onje aro. I ate in the morning. Yeah. Oh, well done, Larry. See, someone got it both. That is really good. Yes. Yeah, so I ate breakfast and then I ate in the morning. So the difference here is onjaro. Onjaro means breakfast. That is the food you eat in the morning is called breakfast. Moje onjaro. Well, this one is moje ni because of the word ni is giving us a different meaning. So I ate in the morning. Okay. Well done, everyone. That was really good. <laughs> I'm sorry it was confusing at first, but we got there in the end. So try to practice as much as you can. Play around with words because the more you do, the more you understand the logic between the sentences. And if you, <laughs> yes, that's how it works. I know. I suppose it was confusing, wasn't it? Yeah. But here, help us to understand that uh, it's a preposition of time. What time? When did you do something? Mujem ni aro. Or onje aro means breakfast so muje onje aro all right okay so shall we try another sentence how would i say um, okay one of the many greetings that we do in yoruba is ode ode who can tell me what ode means o de who understand what that word is ode do re that is the tone mark on it do re o de okay i'll help you out so ode means an outing that is what ode means now so this outing is something to do with uh party a celebration, get together kind of thing is called ode. Ode. So, if you want to greet someone <laughs> that's had an ode, ah, yes, a party, ode, exactly, an outing. Yeah, ode. So, if you want to greet someone that has gone on an outing in Yoruba, how would you do that? Can you guess? So, with what we've talked about earlier, which is how would you say uh happy celebration or happy party? Mm, kind of. Yeah, but how would you <laughs> greet the person that has gone on an outing in Yoruba? Usually we will just need to add This is can you see how easy it is? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's all right. Okay, so ode is outing. Epu ode. Can you see how easy it can be to say a greeting to a Yoruba person? You just need to add e and pu. Epu ode. Yes, well done. Yeah, that's it. Epu ode. So epu ode is kind of happy outing. That happy is just there for. For being there, say that is not the literal translation of it, but it's more like, oh, happy outing. I have learned the fact that you've been out, you've been partying. Okay, so that's if your friends go out on an outing and then they come back like, oh my god, day. So when you're talking to your friends, you don't need to put the word eh. You don't need to use that. You can say All right. So that is how you say a greeting. Any other one that you need to do, just put ku or eku in front of it. 
let's look at another uh, common greeting in Yoruba. This one is a kind of a funny one, and it's usually it says "epu owo lomi." Does anyone have a clue what this word is? Epo owo lomi. So. Remi, Remi, Mire. That is how the tone map works. Epo owo lomi, Remi, Remi, Mire. Right? Epo owo lomi. Let me give you a hint, a clue. So, this one here is owo, which is your hand. Here is hand. That's the clue. And this here is water. Okay, so that is a clue. Epo awa lomi. Awesome, yes, 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 yes. So this is a greeting to someone who just had a baby. It sounds a little bit strange, but do you know why they say epo awa lomi to someone who has had a baby? Okay. It's because before the invention of hampers, before we start using diapers and all of those things, we use nappies. Okay, so these nappies, when the baby uses them, you're constantly washing. So your hands are constantly in water because you have to change your baby's nappies and you have to wash them. You're doing a lot of washing. You're washing their clothes and all of that. <laughs> I know it is funny. How does hand and water translate to that? Yeah, so that's just what I'm I'm trying to explain. So when you have a baby, you do a lot of washing. And in Nigeria, in the Yoruba land, we do washing with our hands. Unlike the Western world where you just put everything in the washing machine. No. Back home, we do a lot of hand washing. So your hands are constantly in water. So owa ni omi. So this lomi here is a combination of two words, which is ni and Omi. Okay, so when it's put together, it becomes lomi. Lomi. So ekwawa ni nomi. Your hand is constantly in water. You're doing some washing up of clothes and all of that. So a new mother will do a lot of washing up. And that is why we put them. Ekwawa lomi o. <laughs> I know it sounds really strange, hand in water. How does it translate to that? Yeah, but that is way that is the root. Of the um, of the word where it came from, because mothers are constantly doing a lot of hand washing. All right. Okay, so that is a All right. Now let's look at another greeting. Do you have any more question on this particular one I just explained? Please do let me know and just put your question forward. So another one we're going to be looking at is um. I told you Yoruba people greet for everything, right? Look at this one. Oh, mm. First and foremost, who can tell me what tone mark should be on this word? Oh, mm. what can you hear? Oh, oh, mm. oh, mm. oh. Mm. Yes, well done. So it is. Hmm, no, it's not domi. O, o, ru, o, flat, o, flat, ru, flat. There is no high, there is no low. So it is re, 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 o, re, re, re. Yes, that's it. That's it. Re, re, re. <laughs> yeah, it is it's very... It's very tricky, but the moment you understand it, the moment it snaps in your head, the logic is just there and it's there forever. Yes, you mean like, well done. So it is re, re, re. So, oru means sleep. That is oru, sleep. Okay? So, in Yoruba, we greet someone that is sleeping and we say, very funny. <laughs> we would greet them as ekuoru. Epu, all right. So, epu, 
Epuru. Epuru. That is how you would treat someone that has been sleeping for a while and they just woke up and like, ah, Emma, who Epuru. Epuru. <laughs> yeah, so that is one of the funny greetings that I would greet someone. Like, why would you greet someone if you're sleeping? Mm. That is your rabbit hole for you. You greet for everything. <laughs> Epuru. So with this logic, you can greet anybody. Yoruba. Just put Eku before anything you want to greet them for. You just tell them Eku this, Eku that. Do you understand that? Uh, okay. So let's look at another one. And this one is quite common. Who can tell me what this is? Equireju, yeah, that's another good one. <laughs> so Ireju is more like a, a, a nap, if not a deep sleep. Ah, Equireju. So you you've had a nap or you rested for a while. You rather people will greet you for that. Equireju. <laughs> okay, so oh, glad you understand. Okay, so who can tell me what this word is? Look at the tone mark on it and try to guess what the word is. Yes. Yes, well done. It is work. <laughs> work. So this is re mi i she. Re mi i she. That's work. So if we want to greet someone who has been working, working hard most times, we'll say to them, e hu i she. So we will say to them, Ekuche, Eku Ishe. That is the full pronunciation of the sentence. But because your people are just lazy, we will say Eku She. Okay, so sometimes this is often taken off, which is the E in Ishe. Eku ishe becomes eku she. Eku she. This word eku she can be used in two ways. It can be used in a respectful manner, just like greeting someone who has been working hard, like ah eku she. Okay, and it can as well be used in a sarcastic way, or can as well be used in a warning way, like eku she. I'm giving you a warning. I want you to stop doing what you're doing. Eku she. Kind of. Okay, so the tone to which you use it will determine what you really mean when you say "ekuche." So "ekuche" is you appreciating the person, like "oh, well done for your work," or "kuche," well done, stop doing that. "Kuche," that's another way. Okay, so is that clear? All right. In summary, we have seen how the times of the day are written. Aro, osan, irole, and ale. Uh, there are two words, uh, letters in Yoruba alphabet that look similar. So this is si and this is she. Si sound like C. Okay, that is how it sounds. C sounds like C, and she sounds like she in English. And sometimes some Yoruba words use she, but it's wrong. This is the correct one they are supposed to use. Yoruba. Good. I'm glad you understand that now. So this is C, and this is she. So, for example, if I want to write shola, shola, this is the correct spelling of shola. Shola, not this. Okay, not this. This is wrong and this is right. Shola. But most people, unfortunately, uses the second one. Shola. All right. So this is C and this is she. That's how you pronounce it. 
Okay. So, I want to give us an assignment. Ah, Shola. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. So, say to your colleague that now you know how to spell our name. Is it her or he? Because Shola is a unisex. You can either, it can either be a female or a male's name. Shola. So say to them, I know how to spell your name now. <laughs> this is how you say it, Shola. Mm. So the assignment I want to give us is make five sentences. Oh, it's her. Okay. Yeah. So tell her, Shola, I know how to spell your name now and I know how to pronounce it correctly. Shola, re, me. Shola, re, me. All right. So I want us to make five sentences with the word arrow. Arrow. Make five sentences with that. Okay? That's an assignment. Five sentences with the word arrow. And I want you to make three greetings with echo. Three. Echo. So, Come up with whatever greeting you want to say to that Yoruba friend, echo and make it up. So three of these and five of these. So make five sentences with aro and three sentences, three greetings with echo. All right. Good. So that's gonna be all for today. Thank you everyone that have joined and those that are just joining were just about finishing up. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's class. And we're going to have another class next week, Wednesday. Okay? Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you all so much for coming.